All right, guys. Today we're going to look at the rules of the anti-differentiation, and uh, if you check your book, you will find a table similar to this one, uh, where you have that the antiderivative of x to the n is going to be x to the n plus one over n plus one, uh, plus a constant of integration c. This is true for every n distinct to negative one. Whenever you have uh, n equals to negative 1, then you would have to go to the next rule, which x to the negative 1 becomes 1 over x, and that would give you the, the antiderivative of this would give you natural log of the absolute value of x plus c, and lastly, the antiderivative of e, an exponential is going to be 1 over a e to the ax plus c. So let's apply it in the, in the first case. In this case, we would use the power rule, uh, considering that n in this case is a third. So in this case then you're going to have x to the n plus 1 using this expression right here. n plus 1 is going to be 1 third plus 1 over n plus 1 again 1 third plus 1 and then plus c. So notice I started right away with a fractional exponent. It doesn't really matter uh, what you have, so long you don't have negative 1. You can just follow this uh, rule, and uh, you will obtain your antiderivative. Now, this would be a little rude to leave it like this. We want to write it uh, in a nicer way. So for example, if you would add this 1, you can think about this 3 thirds. So when you add it up, add it up it's going to be x to the one third plus three thirds, so four thirds, and then divided by four thirds plus c. And if you want to uh, make it look even nicer, then this four thirds you're dividing by it. You can multiply times its reciprocal, so you're going to have three fourths. And then you could write something like the cubic root of x to the fourth plus c. Um, all right, and that give you, gives you your antiderivative. If you would take the derivative of that, you would go back to x to the one third, um, and that would mean that that would be antiderivative. Now, here this expression doesn't quite look like uh, what we had here. It looks more like this. But if you pay attention, I can convert this expression into something like this by just writing it as x to the negative 4 dx. And now that is going to give me the same power rule, but with n equals negative 4. And uh, nobody said that n couldn't be negative. All we said is n could not be negative 1. Any other number is fine. So we can apply our rule. So it's going to be x to the negative 4 plus 1 over negative 4 plus 1 and your constant of integration. This you could write as x to the negative 3 over negative 3 plus c. And then you can send this guy to the denominator and put it as 1, let's put the negative outside, 3x cubed plus c. And there you have it. There's your antiderivative. Okay, so now we can apply the antiderivative uh, rule for the exponential, or rule number 3, to this expression. In this case, we would have a is 3. So we just straight up use the rule. So 1 over 3 e to the 3x plus e. So this one is the easiest. There's really nothing else. Always keep in mind that you have to write this plus c. And the reason why professors will require you to have that plus c is not because we are picky or anything like that. It's because whenever you're calculating an antiderivative, you don't get a unique answer. You get many, many things. You get infinitely many. And that will depend on the choice of this constant right here. So it really would be doing a disservice to the antiderivative if you would not put that plus c because you'd be saying that it takes a unique value and that is not true. Uh, later we will see how you can actually 
when you have an initial value uh, or, or initial condition, you can actually specify or find that value of the constant that makes the problem uh, or that solves the problem. So, so that that value of c is not uh, to be forgotten. So definitely you want to remember about that. Okay. So let's do one last problem where we have a combination of most of our cases. Um, and so what we're going to do here, since we have an, uh, sums of them, we can uh, split it into different integrals, or antiderivatives, sorry. So e to the 6x dx, leave it as a single one, then minus, pull that 3 out. We can do that by the linearity of the antiderivative. So we have 1 over x dx. All I did is pull this 3 out, and I'm left with 1 over x. And then plus, here, this one I can write it as x to the 4 thirds. And each one of these looks like a rule. This one looks like rule number three. This one looks like rule number two. And this one looks like rule number one. So I just apply the corresponding rules now. And I get 1 over 6 e to the 6x minus 3 natural log of the absolute value of x plus, and then I have here x to the 4 thirds plus 1. So x to the four thirds plus one. All this is an exponent divided by four thirds plus one plus a constant c. And there's a few little things you could do to make it look prettier. And that is, for example, you could put this three inside of the logarithm, but if it's going to go inside, have to go in as a as an exponent. So you put it in there. And this one, for example, we can write it as <coughs> 4 thirds plus 3 thirds is going to be 7 thirds. Or if you want, you can write it as x to the 7 and then put the cubic root. That is just adding 4 thirds plus 1 is 7 thirds. So this is the x to the 7 thirds. And this gives me divided by 7 thirds plus c. And I can, lastly, multiply the whole thing. Instead of dividing by 7 thirds, multiply it by 3 sevenths. And we get, copy this guy. Copy this guy. And then I get uh, 3 sevenths. And then the cubic root, x to the 7. And that's your antiderivative right there. All right, that's that for today. If you have any questions, uh, make sure to put them in the comments or uh, contact me. If you're in my class, you can send me an email and ask me questions. Um, other than that, uh, there's nothing else to add to this section, and uh, see you next time.